Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, I want to get the fight GUI in place. And this is so we can eventually display the health bars and actually have the strikes affect the opponent beyond just playing an animation which they are doing at the moment. But we need to get some things in place first. And in fact, just to begin, I'm just going to get the timer actually displaying. So I'll create a new C Sharp script. We'll call this Fight Manager. And we'll open it up for editing. We'll create private int fight timer and we're going to say this is going to equal to 99. Now I am going to have it so you can actually change how long the fights last for but I won't be able to do that until we get around to doing the options script. So I'm just going to use a value of 99 for now. But we will be changing that. In the comments defines how many seconds in a round. The next one wants to be of type public static int. Current fight timer. Let's close that off into the comments. Defines the current timer value. And then we'll just come to the void start. We'll say current fight timer is going to equal the fight timer on startup. So we'll just close the line off there into the comments set current fight timer to equal fight timer on start up and we'll just save this off there for now so obviously there's going to be a lot more code for that script but we'll handle that later We'll create another C Sharp script. We'll call this Fight GUI. And let's just open that up for editing. So, right at the top, let's create of type private int underscore and returned current timer value. Close that line off into the comments. Stores retained current timer value. We'll create a type public float underscore. We'll say fight GUI height pause for position. Defines fight GUI height position and these can all be of type private. Private float underscore fight GUI offset. Close that line off into the comments. Defines naming convention for the GUI offset. We'll come below of type private. We want to type vector two this time. Underscore fight GUI timer size. Let's close that off. <coughs> 
defines naming convention for the GUI timer size. Let's just fix that typo. Now we're going to say of private GUI style. So before we go any further, normally we will have um, some sort of GUI skin. We define it publicly and then we assign that. But I'm going to show you a different way of altering the GUI all in code in this script. And it's just to show you different ways of doing things. I think it helps keep things more interesting. So, I've just put that into the comments. Defines naming convention for the GUI style skin. So, I always like doing little things like this just every now and again, just to show you different ways. Um, those of you that are, fo that are following my other tutorial, the Survival Horror series, will all be already be aware that I like to do this now and again. But I'm hoping at least by the time we get to the end of this series, which, yes, is going to be a long way off yet, but I hope by that time that you all feel confident enough to change things around if you want to do things all the same way throughout the project. But let me know any thoughts you may have in the comments below. I always try and read them. But now we're going to come in the void start. We're going to say fight... GUI offset is going to be equal to the screen dot width divided by, I'll use 20, close that line off into the comments fight GUI offset equals screen width divided by 20. And, of course, these values here, I may change those and I always encourage you to experiment to find values that suit your particular project, but I think they will suffice for now. So, fight GUI timer size is going to be equal to a new vector 2 and We'll open and close brackets, close line off. It's okay, I was just thinking then I'll bring that onto another line because it's going to go quite far. So inside the brackets, I'm going to say screen dot width divided by, I'll use 7.5f comma screen dot height I'll use the same value for now. So let's come back to that first line. We'll say fight GUI timer size equals a new vector to the next line by these dimensions. And in fact, I don't think we'll bother with the void putting any more in the void stuff now. We'll come below the void update and we'll create private void. And this can be of type late update. And inside, return to current time value. It's 
going to be equal to the fight manager script dot current fight timer close that line off so why use late update rather than update well as you can see here this is called once per frame this is basically called once per cycle so once a second um because we don't need to have a value that is between an integer, so a whole number, we only need update this in the late update. So once a second. So returned value equals current timer uh, sorry should have put that on the other line turn value equals the current fight timer from fight manager script And we'll come here below, we'll create void on GUI. Let's open and close all brackets. And what we'll do is we'll say the fight GUI skin. That's going to be equal to a new GUI style. Sorry. Open and close brackets, close the line off. Inside brackets, we're going to say gui.skin dot get style. And what we want is well, first we'll open and close brackets, then we'll come inside the second set of brackets. And what we want is label. Let's get that into the comments now. Don't worry if you don't understand how this is going to work. Hopefully once we've got a bit more code in place, you'll be able to see how it works and I'll be able to explain a little bit more. But for now, we'll just say that, let's just copy that naming convention in. Equals a new GUI style we'll come below here we're going to say fight GUI skin dot and now we want the font size because the default will be too small and we're going to say it's going to be equal to screen dot width um, divided by 10 into the comments font size equals the screen width divided by 10 by GUI skin and then we want the alignment is going to be equal to text anchor and what we want is middle center so let's get that into the comments gui alignment equals middle center so let's just save that off there and we've got all the basics in place and we'll pick this up in the very next video so as always i hope you enjoyed this lesson i hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now